this is your daily briefing. You're most welcome to Champions League football. What more could you want? Um, jury was in a while ago, if we're honest with ourselves. Um, Conte ball is Mourinho ball by another name, minus your prejudices. It's OK when we're winning because then the people who are saying, yeah, but it's not great to watch, your voice, your critique gets lost in the mix of that noise. Um, but... You know, your inconsistencies, your inability to understand what you're looking at. It's a little bit sad. Um, Spurs numbers, not great. Not great at all. It was more about the performance, though. More about the, the, the individual ability to affect and influence the game. That's long-winded for how much they kind of got into it. Um, and there just was an absolute absence of flair, imagination, wit and drive. Um, Spurs are struggling to approach games in a sufficiently assertive manner. And by that, I mean, what I really mean is that I think they've left far too much on the training pitches. Um, I mentioned this under a, a period during Poch's reign. I was told that I'd got that wrong. Um, it was evidently clear because he was doing the same thing that this guy's now falling into the, t t the routine of doing, which is picking his best 11, running them into the floor. And when he does make substitutions very late in the game, they're not tactical, they're physical. Um, and we're just seeing history repeat itself on many, many different levels here. Um, Spurs' um, lack of assertion um, demonstrates itself in the ability to sustain press, um, which is hit and miss, to put it mildly. If you have a look at this, just to show you, there's both sides as they set up. And if number 15 there is Eric Dyer, he is our furthest... Um, backline player closest to Hugo Lloris and you can see there that he's actually a long way away from him so Conte's intentions in respect to pressing were good but if you look to the other side there you look at sporting setup and their line their, that sort of linear space you know just just north if you like of the halfway line there's a lot of players there and again we go back to that kind of a thorny subject of who's in Tottenham's midfield. I can't be done with explaining to you what good um, Pierre Emile Hoybier does for Spurs. He's not perfect, but he is pretty bloody good. And I understand your frustration watching the game and saying, "Well, oh, bring on Bissouma, do something." There isn't anything there, um, and I'll come on to that. Um, uh, yeah, I think he's overtrained them and it's this business for me and again it's backed up by the numbers whether you like them or not whether you like them or not they don't lead the narrative but they support the truth and you have the situation where if you look at Spurs um, engagement generally across the disciplines Spurs don't come alive on average um, until between the 30 say the 30th and the 50th minute of any game half time they tend to get it in the ear and that sort of perks them up but you know we look tired um we were pressed out of it by an effective but i would suggest a, a largely unexceptional sporting lisbon i'm not doing them down they're not rubbish but i, I think if we're honest with ourselves are they going to feature in the last eight of this competition i don't think they will do um it was all good will in the world i think that seems a little bit ambitious there's a few sparks of couple of great players in there but they're not stellar players they're not players that without any Tottenham bias no rose tinted or lily white tinted uh, lenses they're not players that you'd put on the same level as Harry Kane and Hyung Son Min um, Tottenham look to all intents and purposes only marginally improved from the mob that stank out the Europa Conference League and that's because there isn't that much of a seismic change between that squad and this squad. It's not complicated. Um, we know there are some fine players at Spurs and the squad at a glance looks quite tasty. But this is the Jamie Redknapp argument. Oh, look at all these internationals. Man. And the thing that's wrong, and this, this is a thing I'm guiding to you towards gently, it's not Conte. It's the players, and it's not the players' fault as such, but it's the fact that there isn't a depth. The moment you stray, and this is why I say we're history repeating itself, Poch did it, and now Conte's do it. He know, d is doing it. You now can see the players who are reliable, and you might not like Emerson, okay? And I know I see everybody's going bonkers about what a bad person Emerson, Emerson is, and... Um, 
you know, just did absolute contempt for the guy. But I stand by, not him, because I don't know him personally, but I stand by the fact that before we bought him, just weeks before we bought him, it was like literally seven weeks or something like that, I can't remember, it was maybe two months tops we bought him. He was bought from Real Betis, or whoever it was, for about seven million quid. What in the name of all that's unholy do you think that buys you? So I don't blame him. I'm not down on him. I mean, he might be a horrible person, but I'm not assessing that. It's nothing personal with me. It's business. And this guy, you know, there are darker forces at work than this poor guy. There really are. And, and what we're getting, you know, just reiterating things, but what we're getting is a different shade of the same stagnation that came beforehand. Um, Spurs are way deep in the hole. I went through the uh, war chest with you in the war chest video and pointed out that beyond anything, beyond the rubbish of we got out of the gates quick and we started spending, the fact that the debt, the debt in terms of the stuff, we, the junk, the rubbish that we'd had to kind of shuffle off the premises or hide, as I refer to it quite directly, you know, it was 119 million quids worth of junk. All your Don Bellets and all the rest of it. And the net spend of this window that's just gone was 118. I mean, just, just mind-blowing. Um, the new regime has won over many of the fans, of course. Uh, Paratici is cooking and um, Antonio's name is being sung. But the reality, the truth, is, is, is not very deep. It's not very difficult to find. You know, while the Spectrum brothers are talking up, you know, what a world-beating uh, window we've had, Conte has told us in plain English, plain broken English, that, um, which is better than my Italian, that it's going to take two or three windows. In two or three windows time, a lot of our older players are going to be in their anecdotage. You know, they're going to be looking at their pensions and we can't ask as much from them as we might. The, 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 the way that this fan base goes from zero to blind enthusiasm is just terrifying. The club has clearly, without any doubt, underspent on quality, which will provide an immediate benefit to the squad, and overspent on junk. Um, and we can't even, cannot even loan this junk out. Forget Deadwood. I mean, Deadwood, you could do something useful. You chop it up and keep yourself, you know, set fire and keep yourself warm with it. This stuff can't even be given away, can't even be hidden without the wages being heavily subsidised. Unbelievable. Um, and this is, this is the coldest I'm going to get. I called Pochettino a patsy, and now I'm calling Conte one. Are you sure? It's easy to do when you're not in their position. I understand that. doesn't mean I don't love them, don't, no, I don't support the club anymore, but I'm just calling things for what I see them. They're getting, this guy's getting paid over a million quid a month, plus bonuses, plus this, that, and the other, living the life, absolute life of Riley. How, how was the window? Yeah, yeah, it was great. What about so-and-so player? Yeah, 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 he's very good, very good. I'm not going to play him, though. You can tell by the way that he's, you can tell by the way he uses his walk, but you can tell by the way he's selecting his teams. You can tell by the way he's using, or rather isn't using his bench, which again, go back to it, same thing as Podge, exactly what's going on inside his mind. Um, and we've got fans, of course, saying, oh, bring on Spence, bring on Basuma. They're not the right answer, guys. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm quite happy to experiment and to bring those guys on, say, on the 60th minute or start with them. Do what you want with them. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to be, you know, I'm not, I'm not selling anything here. I, I don't deal in absolute certainty, but they're not the right guys. They're not the right guys. If they were, Conte would be using them because he's not a dummy. Um, that's it for now. Good luck. Keep it on them.